goals in life, lessons on being forgiven, faithfulness, and having a personal relationship with the Lord, and many other lessons. But although I've been taught countless great lessons by some awesome people, teachers, and instructors, there is only one who has significantly impacted me in the spiritual areas of my life, and he is none other than the master teacher, Jesus Christ. And in today's message titled, a master class on waiting. We will see how Jesus modeled for us how waiting is not passive, but it requires action. But before we move on to our text, please bow with me in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you will bless this message and that you will bless me to expound on your word today regarding waiting, and that at the conclusion of this message, our lives will be richly blessed because of it. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. The scripture for today's message is found in Psalms 27, verse 14. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart, Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. A master class on waiting. Waiting requires action. And so today I'll be discussing three different actions that we should do when we are in a state of waiting. And they are, first, work while you wait. Second, Accept while you wait. And third, trust while you wait. So let's start with the lesson on waiting in our first outline, which is work while you wait. Now in our text in Psalms verse 14, David, the writer of this text says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalms 27 is David's declaration of faith to the Lord. In verses 1 through 6, David testifies how the Lord is his light, salvation, and strength. And he speaks of his love for the Lord and his desire to dwell in the house of the Lord and how the Lord is his protector against his enemies. And then in verse 7, he switches from being in from praising the Lord to crying out to the Lord in prayer. As he says, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have you ever had to cry out to the Lord with your voice? Then in the final verses in this text, David turns to start proclaiming the goodness and power of the Lord. And in the final verse, which is our text scripture, David speaks about the power of faith in waiting and then encourages others to wait on the Lord with emphasis placed on the words, wait, I say, on the Lord. Look at this. As believers in Christ, we must actively wait on the Lord, knowing that we serve a God who will deliver us out of our trials and troubles. And I can say this because in the word of God, we see time and time again how the Lord delivered the Old and New Testament saints from countless situations they faced, which was David's testimony. Wait patiently for the Lord to meet your needs. Be strong and courageous while waiting. Did you know that the secret to patiently waiting is doing something else in the meantime? That's what work while you wait means. You must work 
while you wait on the Lord to respond to your prayers. And that work involves praying and seeking God and studying his word, worshiping and praising him and being a blessing to God and his people. And since this message is a master class on waiting as you wait, Consider the example of the master, none other than Jesus Christ, who himself is our master teacher. Look, Jesus came down through 42 generations to die on the cross for man's sin. But he didn't just leave heaven and come and die in one day. No, Jesus did plenty of work before his appointed time to lay down his life. He worked while waiting. He healed the sick gave sight to the blind, unstopped death ears. He didn't stop there. He made the lame walk and the dumb talk, forgave sins and preached the gospel to the poor. And like Jesus, we should also work while we wait. And we need to lend a helping hand, give a smile, speak a kind word, share Christ whenever the opportunity knocks through our words, actions, and deeds. So, as I wrap up this first outline in this master class on waiting, just know that while you wait patiently on the Lord, work while you wait. Now let's move on to our next lesson on waiting in our second outline, which is accept while you wait. Accept while you wait. If you ever had to wait on anything, then I'm sure that you've come to realize that there are some things that are beyond our control. Knowing this, we can choose to either continue on our own, doing things our way, hoping for a good outcome, or we can accept the reality of the situation while we wait and open our eyes to see God at work in the very circumstance where we find ourselves. And if you're a child of God, and then you must realize that God is in control of your lives and learn to accept the will of God while you wait. When you accept your will, when you accept your will in the Lord, some way, somehow, when you accept your weight in the Lord, some way, somehow, you just know everything is going to be all right. Notice how in our text, David does not speak of a faith that he once had a past faith or a lost faith. No, he speaks of the now abiding and present faith. And he encourages himself to go on cheerfully waiting and hoping. David said, wait on the Lord. Be a good carriage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And here he shows how he accepts the will of God while he wait. And Jesus Christ gave us an example on how to accept the will of God while we wait. And I'm sure that many of you will recall how it was at one of the most pivotal moments in Christ's life that he along with his disciples headed for the Garden of Gethsemane. Now his steps to Gethsemane were among the last steps he took while here on earth. And Jesus went up to Gethsemane for a bloody baptism and to drink a bitter cup and while in Gethsemane. At some point, Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, the inner circle, to a place separated from the rest to watch and pray with him. But while Jesus was away praying, the three disciples were away sleeping. And I don't know which is worse to have, wide awake enemies or sleeping friends. While in Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, Abba, Father, all things possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thy will. Here we have Jesus accepting the will of God. While he did what? While he waited. And even though he was facing a night in Gethsemane, it was a night that was like no other. Here's why it was a night like no other. That night belonged to the power of darkness. That night, the fierce wind of hell was allowed to sweep unbroken over the Savior and cause his disciples to scatter. That night, Christ had to meet by himself to hold a sword of hell and conquer it in his own strength in order to reconcile man back to God. And after praying, Jesus told his disciples 
that the hour is come for the Son of Man is betrayed. Look at this. In Christ's most excruciating hour, he accepted, he didn't reject it, he accepted God's will and not his own. And we must do likewise. We must model Jesus' acceptance and waiting while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because when we surrender ourselves to God's will unreservedly, the Holy Spirit, it cleanses and fills us with his divine love, peace, and joy to help carry us through our period of waiting for God's time. When you accept the will of God, while you wait, you are enduring until God chooses to act on your behalf according to what? According to his perfect timing. Now, to this point in our first outline, we learned the lesson, work while you wait, doing all you can do while you can do it for God and his people. And then in our second outline, we learned the lesson, accept while you wait. So now let's move on to the third and final outline, which is trust while you wait. Trust while you wait. And I've heard it said that the chewing of gum is evident that you can have motion without progress. And when you have motion without progress, you're simply waiting. And even while we're waiting, many times we are still going through things. You know, that's why it's so important for us to trust God because he's got a perfect track record. That's a good enough reason to trust him. Look, in Psalm 34 verse 19, David said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. He didn't say that God delivered him out of some of them, but David said the Lord delivered him out of them all. So, trust God while you wait. Now, to wait on the Lord not only involves patience, but it also involves trust. And as believers, we know and recognize God is to be trusted while we wait. Believe me, he is a God that you can trust. He's a trustworthy God. He is a trusted God. He's a trustful God. We are his dear children, whom he paid the supreme price, life of his own son, Jesus Christ. And we should be especially encouraged when we remember that nothing is more powerful than the love of God who gave his son for us. And that's a love that we can trust. We must also remember that God acts according to his schedule, not ours. He is never late. He is always on time to accomplish his perfect purpose. The waiting is the difficult part. I think you have to agree with me about that. But it is in God's waiting room that he does so much more important work in our lives. In the meantime, we need not be afraid of anything that invades our lives. The thing that we need to do is to trust God while we wait. When we're in God's waiting room, one thing about it, the Lord, he just won't just leave you just exposed and while you're in his waiting room. While the Lord have you in his waiting room, he's still going to protect you. He's still going to encourage you. And he still have plenty of love for you. And so when you're in the waiting room, you're waiting for the Lord to come through for your blessing. Don't think that the Lord has just thrown you away or has written you off. You just keep on waiting. You keep on working. You accept the reason that you're there. And then you do what? You trust God while you wait. You can trust God while you wait because God is with us and for us. And he will deliver us when his purpose has been fulfilled. And until he does, we can endure with strength, courage, and hope. And if you recall in John chapter 14, Jesus gave his disciples a master class on trust while you wait. With his word, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me in my father's house so many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. At this point in the earthly ministry of Jesus, 
he is letting his disciples know that his found days with them are fast approaching. And the foretelling of his final days and his death, it caused the disciples' hearts to be troubled. And they had reasons to be troubled because several things had just happened that would disturb anybody or people. Divisiveness had set in among them. They were arguing about which of them would be the greatest in heaven. Desertion and betrayal by Judas, one of his 12 disciples, were now known. Separation from the Lord had been the topic of discussion as Jesus told them how he would uh, be leaving them for a while. And Jesus had even informed Peter how he would later deny him. And all of this left his disciples confused, agitated, disturbed, perplexed, worried, and in distress. So they needed to be settled down and give some sense of peace, encouragement, and hope. So knowing all of this, Jesus tells them to trust him and to continue to believe in him even while in the midst of trouble. And their trust, their trust in him is what will carry them through their troubles. Jesus wanted them to know that believing in God the Father and God the Son would deliver their troubled hearts. And the same is true for us today as we go through our waiting period. We must Trust God while we wait. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. So, trust God while you wait. Now, waiting can be difficult for those who fail to trust God. Because they lack the full assurance and confidence that God knows best and that he is working everything together for their good. But God has a purpose in what he allows to happen to his children. And we must trust him not only during times of success and prosperity, but also during times of failure and adversity. God can bring joy out of sorrow. That's the reason that we ought to trust him. He can bring joy out of sorrow, light out of darkness, his appointment out of your disappointment. So why don't you trust God while you wait? Did you know that our ability to wait is directly proportionate to our faith and trust in our source who is the Lord? Did you know that? So just know that patient endurance as we wait for the Lord to work in the difficult circumstances of life encourages our faith in God to be strengthened. Now in closing, in today's master class on waiting, we saw Jesus Christ, the master teacher's example of what is involved in waiting and what we are to do while waiting, which was first work while you wait. Do what you know to do. Believe in the Lord to do what only he can do and rest in his promises that all things work together for your good. Second, accept while you wait. Jesus Christ, he modeled for us how to accept the will of God in the Garden of Gethsemane with the word. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what I will. And he accepted God's will and not his own. And as we wait, we must do likewise. Third, trust while you wait. We can trust God while we wait because God is with us and for us. And he will deliver us when his purpose has been fulfilled. Are you waiting for God to move in your life today? If so, while you wait, apply the lessons from this master class on waiting and start working, accepting, and trusting in the will of God. Wait on the Lord, be a good carriage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. A master class on waiting. Thank you and may God bless you. Please bow with me in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this message today. A master class on waiting. Thank you for teaching us that when we are in your waiting room, you are working things out for much greater good than what we originally requested. And we recognize, dear Lord, that it is because that you love us is the reason that sometimes that you have us to wait in your waiting room 
while you're working it all out for us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have a prayer request, would like to invite the Lord into your life, or if you have any comments, please send me a Facebook message or use the contact us option available on our website at pmbcfellowship.org. You can also contact me with your questions on today's message. To give your tithes, offerings, and donations, please visit PMBC Fellowship and click on the gear button at the top right of the page. Follow the instructions from there. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Thanks again for tuning in to this, a masterclass on waiting. And remember, if you work, accept, and trust the Lord while you wait, you will be able to wait patiently on the Lord. Now, I look forward to you joining us on next Sunday at 11 a.m. here at the pastor's desk or on YouTube at PMBC Space Fellowship or seeing you in person for Sunday morning worship on site, Providence Missionary Baptist Church in Monte Alba, Texas, being in accordance with the CDC guideline. Until then, I want you to take care and may God bless you.